Well, I've been watching birds for all, my, almost all of my adult life. And um, uh, not absolutely all of it, but I, I guess I started when I was 26. So I've been watching birds for a long time. Um, and I always wanted to take pictures of birds, but it seemed the, the technical requirement seemed so daunting. And uh, um, at one point I was living in Santa Barbara up in the mountains and I, I had the desire to photograph every species of bird that lived there. It was a pretty innocent idea. Oh, I'll just take pictures of all the birds. So Michael, my husband, who's very good at technical things, got us a camera and uh, we, I went out to take pictures of birds. And of course, at that time, it was all film, and by the time you get the thing back, you've spent 25 cents per picture, which was a lot of money 40 years ago, you know. So to do that, you didn't just shoot 500 pictures, you know, you were kind of careful with them. And then you'd look at the pictures and say, somewhere in here there's a bird. <laughs> I know there's a bird in there somewhere. But you couldn't really see them. So, um, I mean, it was a huge thing. When people say they want to photograph a bird, they don't really understand how difficult it is to photograph a bird, how difficult it is. It's either expensive or uh, daunting in terms of the, the, the getting physical access to the bird. Because you've got to get up close enough to take the picture of the bird. And if the bird is way, way far away, you're not going to have a good picture. Now you can get um, you can get long lenses, and then you don't have to get so close to the birds. But the longer the lens is, the more the shake that's inherent in any photograph is going to uh, be a bearing. So you need a tripod, and you know it, you you've, pretty soon you're into a lot of equipment stuff. Uh, nevertheless. Over the years, I did kind of start taking a few pictures of birds, and I can't say I was ever really happy with any of them. And then about five years ago, I went to Jamaica with a group of people, birders, and one of the women there had a, a lens that she was carrying around without a tripod, and she was taking pictures of birds. And they were pretty good pictures. So when I came home, I had taken a picture of her lens, and I showed it to Michael, and I said, I need that lens. Bless his heart, he's such a nice guy. The next day, I had that lens. He got it overnight for me. And since then, I've pretty much been useless for doing anything else, because all I want to do is take pictures of birds. I mean, it's not the only thing I want to do. I do do other things, but I really like to take pictures of birds. And, um, you know, it's, I like to share them. As soon as I take them, I want to show other people. So I've been putting them on Facebook. I try and put a picture up every day. And they're not things that I call from the past, usually. I try to put up a picture that I took that day. And so it's developed into a kind of a mission for me that I like to show people a picture, especially for people who are in our own community here in Fairfield. What could you be seeing in your own backyard today? Or what could you see if you walked down the street or you drove down, the, you drove down Highway 1 and you were looking, what might you see? And my happiest moments are when people say, Oh, I, now I know what that is I've been seeing. Or sometimes I also record the songs. And I, they say, oh, now I know what that bird is. I've been hearing the yellow-billed cuckoo, but I didn't know that's what it was. And now I know what it is. So that's very, very fulfilling to me. I like to do that. One woman said, she emailed me. Um, she's one of my Facebook friends that I've never seen. I have many friends that I don't even know who they are. But she said, my son, uh, every morning he says, what, what bird has Diane posted this morning and then we go look for that bird in our backyard that day and that made my day that was just the greatest thing because what I really want to see happen I, I really think that watching birds is the is the hope of the world I really do I think it's the it's one of the most important things that a person can possibly do and I'll go into that in detail if you want to know why but for now just it is extremely important to me and I think it's important to the world and anything I can do to get other people to notice birds is just wonderful because I think people get so involved in their little electronic gadgets. You know, they can live on this thing that they, they don't notice the real natural world that's around. And birds are a way, uh, they're, they're really easy to see. Uh, they're really colorful and interesting and varying. They change all the time. 
every day it's a different little different group of birds around you and through the seasons they change and if you drive a hundred miles you'll have different some of the birds will be gone and there'll be other ones that'll be there that you didn't have before so so starting to notice birds gets you really noticing what is happening in the natural world and that's what I think people need more connection to people need to be connected to nature um, because that if we if we aren't connected to nature we're going to just destroy it that's one thing it gets people to to appreciate it first they have to notice it then they have to appreciate it and then they're likely to make choices that will help to preserve it so I do feel like it's an extremely important thing for the world and a number of years ago Michael and I decided that everything that we did had to everything we did in a business way had to contribute in some way to the development of a sustainable culture on the planet we started out a software business when we came to Fairfield 32 years ago what were we going to do Go get a job you know in the shoe store or something we, we had to make our own business and so we started making we started with a software company because Michael loves computers he got the first Macintosh the, got a Macintosh computer I think the first day that they were available and said okay we made a little we made a little utility for the Macintosh and we did that for a year or two and then we said no we can only do things that matter we're not going to do anything that we don't really care about and what we really care about is helping to move human consciousness toward a sustainable human way of interacting with each other and with the planet so um, we said what can we do in our business our business was named idea form and we said what can we do well uh, we were making um, we started making a piece of software for bird watchers and it's called bird brain do you need me to stop for a minute here okay um, instead of just making software that helped people keep track of the files on their disks on their computer which when we had those little disks you know those little square things you put in the computer we made a software something called McLabeler that helped people label their disks and we said okay really does it matter does the universe really care if people have their labels on their disks and if they can find I mean does it it's nice it's important but does it really matter it doesn't matter at all but I was reporting every quarter to the ornithological organization in Iowa the Iowa Ornithologist Union who has the wonderful um, short name of IOU I was reporting every quarter to the IOU what birds I had seen because birders do that it's a way that an organization keeps track of what birds are seen so that you can track trends over the long period of time and I was doing it by hand and I said if only there was a way to do this on the computer to make this easier Michael said oh I think I could make you a database that would do that so he very shortly had created bird brain which allowed us to allow a person to record their sightings and keep a life list and report to their regional editors and so on. So we started making bird brain. That was 1985. So we've been making bird brain a long time and it's re gone through many refinements. It's not quite a sophisticated program. It's only for Macintosh computers. People all over the world use it and they use it to report their sightings to eBird which is an international uh, collection data uh, collection service for for birding data um, so we started making bird brain and we and we also reviewed some binoculars we we were asked by a national magazine to review some binoculars and we made the review and then one of the manufacturers said well wouldn't you like to sell our binoculars and we went oh we could sell something besides bird brain we were so silly I mean we were so stupid we didn't have any experience in selling anything you know it just wasn't in our awareness at the beginning but we said yeah we could sell those binoculars so we started selling the binoculars one kind of binoculars and then we said you know maybe we could sell other people's birding software who don't have Macintoshes maybe we could sell other people's birding software that don't have Macintoshes and so we uh, we started selling other software and we started selling some other kinds of binoculars and pretty soon 
Well, we, we quickly decided that Ideaform didn't work as a name at all, and so we changed our name to birdwatching.com. We were really lucky that we got that URL, and so we became birdwatching.com, and that is what we're known to the world as though we're still technically Ideaform Inc. We do business as birdwatching.com. So we now sell, now sell binoculars and bird baths and bird feeders and so on, mostly on the internet, but a growing number of people in Fairfield actually come out to our store, which is south of town, out in the country. They drive out in the country and come and look at our binoculars and maybe go for a walk and see some birds with their new binoculars because we have a lot of land and trails on uh, there where we can let people look at birds with us. So, um, so we, now we devote our, our working hours to running our business, reviewing. We've continued to review optics, and we do that for usually for Birdwatcher's Digest and so for some other publications too. And, uh, and, we, and we're continuing to develop BirdBrain, which is about to come out with a new version that people can use on their iPhone and their iPad. And so a lot of people are asking for that. They want that really bad. I'm very excited about the new versions of BirdBrain that'll do that. So um, when I'm not busily restocking bird you know, binoculars or talking to customers and uh, tracking what happened to the thing that they ordered that FedEx has lost track of, if, I, if I'm not busy doing that, then I'm taking pictures of birds. So. That's it. That's it. <laughs> That's it. Um, going back, uh, do you take photographs, and you could restate this, I take photographs. Do you take photographs just in Fairfield now or in Iowa of birds? Could you tell us about that? Well, I, I, as I said, I'm really interested in taking photographs of birds. And I will take photographs of birds wherever I am. It is really fun to travel to a different place because you'll get different birds. And if that happens, then I'm just thrilled to be able to take pictures of birds in that place. In fact, earlier this month, I had the wonderful opportunity, thanks to Zeiss Optical Company, to travel to Europe and go on a bird watching trip to Germany, uh, Austria, and Hungary. Um, they were introducing a new binocular, which is a wonderful binocular, and um, their new um, Victory SF, it's called. It's not out yet, but it'll be out very soon. We got, we got early prototypes of them, and we got to test them for a few days. And I had my camera on my shoulder the entire time, so I was taking pictures of birds in Hungary, and I was thrilled to be able to do that. And when I got home, I was able to enter them in my bird brain software, so that now when I look, at, look back at my life list, I can see, oh, well, here's the bird I saw in this part of Hungary. And, you can mark it on the GPS so you can, or you can get the GPS number so you can just click and now you see a map of where you were. You can see there's the bridge where I was, where I saw the great reed warblers singing. You know, it's, it's really great. So um, anytime I get the opportunity to travel, I love to travel in order to get to see new birds because every place is different. And of the hundred or so birds that I saw in Central Europe, there were probably only about 10 that are also seen here. They were almost all new birds to me. But most of the time I'm not traveling, most of the time I'm at home, so I'm taking pictures at home. Um, if I, and I almost always carry my camera. If I, if I go to the mailbox, which is at the end of our driveway, I take my camera because you never know, there may be a green heron. In fact, yesterday, as I went to the post office, to the mailbox, there was a green heron taking flight and I snapped a picture of him and I put him up on Facebook this morning. So I'm always looking for a chance to, to get a picture of a bird anywhere. And anytime I get a chance to go someplace else, I'm thrilled. People do often ask me if I'm going to publish these pictures. In a way, I am publishing them because they're available for people to see on, on Facebook. I also put them on our website. Our, bird watching, our website is birdwatching.com. In fact, if you just type birdwatching into Google, birdwatching, uh, we usually come up number two. We were, we're number one for years, now Wikipedia beats us out. We're usually number two. So you can go to our website, and I have in the upper right-hand corner of our page is 
this, mor out this morning outside with Diane, and I generally put up my picture there every day too. And I may do some other kind of publishing. We've, we've put out a, a little book of, of some of my uh, uh, photographs digitally. Um, paper publishing is very expensive uh, for color photos, and I'm not sure that it's a good idea. Um, you know, I'm, I'm concerned about how much physical resources are consumed when people are shipping pit books around, shipping paper around, the inks, the, you know, the whole processes are not so, not so easy on the environment. And people are getting more and more accustomed to looking at things right online. Um, you know, and, and we live in an age in which people like snacks more than they like whole meals, I think. So, so I'm always making snacks for people. Now, sometimes I probably will put some more, make some more collections. I make my own collection um, of each year's Facebook uh, photos and make using larger versions of the pictures so that a person can expand them and look at the detail in them if they want to, because they're pretty small on Facebook. Um, but I may do some more of that. And let's say you asked me something else um, about what a person would do. Oh, where they would, where they would find, where they would see it. Yeah, if you want to see more of my pictures, go to birdwatching.com or check out my Facebook page. I'm dporter at lisco.com. If you put that in the search field, you get my Facebook page. It's open to the, to the public. None of it's private, so you can see any of them. And, you know, I don't really share what I had with lunch, for lunch and that I'm going to Menards to buy curtain material. Uh, I'm not sharing that level of my life with people because it's not that interesting, but you know, I am trying to put pictures up all the time. Sometimes pictures of my dog too. I have a very cute little dog named Lade, who's also quite a bird watcher. She spends hours, if she's not outside, she's sitting by the window watching the birds at the feeder. She absolutely loves to watch birds.